This is Witchbase News for Friday the 25th of October 2024 I'm Commander Burr. The nearly dangerous news this week. There's one titan left standing as Sojin A's reappearance brings hints at things to come. Powerplay 2 arrives next week alongside concerns over what the changes might mean for the bubble and there's in game freebies, an important incoming announcement and more in a packed week ahead for Elite Dangerous. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ding the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support our channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. It's been a busy couple of weeks of Galnet developments ahead of what is likely to be a really big week ahead for the game. More on that in a moment. The Xeno Research and Defence Agency Aegis opened up early last week to highlight new and ongoing research into the technology left behind in the wreckage of the now 7 destroyed Thargoid Titans. The game changing supercruise overcharge frameshift drive technology has of course already been adapted from salvaged and back engineered titan wreckage but this latest discussion from Aegis very solidly seems to imply that yet more Thargoid titan tech ...let's call it 3T ...could be making its way into human hands. The main thrust of the piece focuses on what Aegis refers to as the Thargoids mastery of heat management and how what we're learning from them is completely changing human understanding of thermodynamic efficiency. A not entirely unironic set of statements given that we're using what essentially equates to gigantic heat overloads to destroy their invading motherships. The Guardian Tech nanite torpedoes being fired at the Thargoid Titans disrupt that very mastery of heat and melt the monstrous violent vegetable from the inside out. Whilst learning more about heat management might initially lead a commanders thoughts to perhaps more efficient heat dispersion in the form of better heat sinks the article goes on to focus on the thermodynamic challenges of large scale manufacturing and the processing of raw materials rather than any potential in new modules for existing vessels. Further mentioning that what we're now learning could reduce the cost to the consumer and increase accessibility. It's hard to make a solid argument for ships and modules in the game being prohibitively expensive to commanders as credits tend to flow like water. The most expensive item in the game and as a result the least accessible however is the fleet carrier. They come in at an eye watering 5 billion credits still and that's before you've even outfitted them and paid for weekly upkeep and fuel etc. So could we be seeing a drop in fleet carrier prices in the near future off the back of Thargoid based technological advances? It's worth noting also that heat management is one of the key mechanics involved in ship detection with a fourth new generation ship still to be revealed before this year is out could we perhaps be on the verge of a detectability revolution with a new generation of cold running stealth capable vessel about to enter the fray. Those power play stronghold fleet carriers are very well defended and in the very early access versions that we've seen they've shown no particular desire to hack themselves while we wait patiently out of range of their patrols. Elsewhere in Galnet Salvation's former unwilling experiment victim Sojin A has resurfaced this week after her somewhat extended absence. Right before the attack and destruction of the 7th Thargoid Titan Ragin in fact which had the common decency to overheat and explode early on Thursday morning UK time after being politely asked to do so by the games anti titan capable commanders. As the near week long attack on Raijin commenced Sojin A suffered a seizure and fell into a coma. After the titan exploded she awoke of her own accord just as suddenly as she would passed out. During Sojin A's downtime Azimuth Biotech demanded that she be unplugged. Azimuth don't like her to the point where they raise objections if she puts on her slippers or opens the fridge almost as though they're frightened of her and what she's capable of. 
The feeling is of course mutual so Janae has no love for her former tormentors and has sworn vengeance. In case you missed the memo Sojin A is the galaxy's only known cybernetically enhanced Thargoid Whisperer. The results of Azimuth Biotech's dabblings in her cerebellum have left her with as an unyet fully realised ability to commune with the Thargoid hive mind in some fashion. The attack on Raijin appears to have triggered some kind of cerebral overload in Sojin A as her installed cybernetic cortical implant disrupted an attempt to control her like some sort of drone. It's long been suspected in the games lore that Thargoid society isn't in fact made up of individuals but is instead entirely constructed from largely mindless insect like drones controlled by a central queen. It's worth underlining at this point again in case you missed the memo that hundreds of thousands perhaps even millions of abducted humans have been rescued from the Thargoid Titans and there have been hints on Galnet that those individuals suffered some kind of biological interference and change whilst in captivity. The Federation and the Empire still have their rescued citizens held in facilities under observation. The more liberal minded alliance however has released their rescued abductees into the general population again. In almost certainly unrelated news the next Thargs Day server tick completely coincidentally falls on October the 31st ...Halloween. There will now be a deliberate pause here for dramatic effect. This recent incident suffered by our Dr Thargs little has also had one other side effect. Sojin A mentions that the Thargoid communique she was subjected to resulted in the Thargoids downloading her memories and the entire sum of everything she knows about humans and being a human. The result being that the Thargoids now have more intelligence on us than any other time in our entire history with them. In all likelihood they understand us now better than we understand them. That could result in one of two outcomes. They'll immediately know how to anticipate our moves much better and therefore be able to kill us more efficiently or possibly somewhat controversially they'll understand us in a way that they couldn't have known us before. They are after all huge multi limbed insects. We are as alien to them as they are to us. In knowing us better they will understand us better and why we react to them as we do leading to a chance at some semblance of a dialogue and perhaps even dare I say it something resembling peace. If that latter option should come to pass who then would be left to commune and coerce the millions of Thargoid infected civilians if the Thargoid themselves had no further interest. Only someone surely who was fluent in Thargoid communication and had a need for an army and a cause in which to focus that army into. Once again a deliberate dramatic pause. Ascendancy The next update to Elite Dangerous has been confirmed by Frontier as launching into the game next week on Tuesday the 29th of October. The update which brings with it the revamped Powerplay 2.0 and the new Mandalay Explorer suffered a small delay after some issues were identified with it by the dev team who were watching crash reports and live streams from the content creator community who had access to a preview version of all the new features. As well as the occasional crash Powerplay was also inducing an unanticipated amount of NPC on commander violence with constant attacks on pledged commanders by opposed faction aligned random NPCs. Frontier have now fixed the crash and made several moves to rein in the overly infused bloodlust of the power aligned AI but it remains to be seen how the deployment of Powerplay is going to change and disrupt 10 plus years of embedded and established player gameplay routines when the update arrives. Whilst the NPC threat has been tempered it is still there in one form or another and it appears at least that if a player is detected from an opposing faction they will be attacked without the need for further provocation. 
While we were making this video I pledged to a power, landed on a planet in the bubble away from any settlements. On this particular occasion there were immediately 7 ships in 3 wings in the instance with me. All 3 wings were pledged to different powers and without performing any provocative actions whatsoever I was attacked and destroyed whilst parked in less than 60 seconds of arriving. Multiple completely unscientific tests afterwards produced different results but on every occasion if I was scanned by a ship aligned to an opposing power I was immediately attacked. And on every occasion that I dropped to the same planet there were always ships from another faction circling. Always. They didn't always detect me but they were always there. If this system is now working as intended then community gatherings of any size are in danger of being severely disrupted if not impossible for anyone allied to a power to actually attend. This will undoubtedly impact community activities like buckyball etc and the burr pit itself regularly plays host to instances of 20 to 30 or more players in the bubble all of whom could be potentially aligned to different powers. We've obviously not had an opportunity to test it live but we're struggling to see at this point how community gatherings can continue to exist alongside this level of power aligned NPC aggression. The presence of the power play ships themselves whilst feeling somewhat deliberately staged is not a problem in itself. It's the unprovoked aggression upon detection away from any installations or possible power play opportunities that very much is. I can understand being perceived as a threat when I'm hovering 50 meters from a settlement with a cargo hold full of misinformation. However, when I'm in an explorer vessel 3 mega meters away the use of lethal force rather than a warning in the form of some harsh words seems off kilter at best and prone to drive commanders away from power play engagement at worst. The notes on the fixes from Frontier also mentioned the Mandalay wings now have appropriate physics. If you've seen Alec Turner's videos on the Mandalay you'll have seen the ships copious wings sinking into planetary surfaces and not colliding. This issue has now been fixed and Alec has produced an updated video demonstrating it which you'll find linked in the description. As I've mentioned the Ascendancy update bringing PowerPlay 2.0 and the Mandalay Explorer is scheduled to arrive in the game next week on the 29th of October. The Frontier Unlocked monthly livestream is happening again next Wednesday and it's likely to be a busy one for a number of reasons not least of which being that it arrives hot on the heels of the aforementioned Ascendancy update featuring PowerPlay and the Mandalay Explorer. Frontier themselves now host their own Discord server for the community also called Frontier Unlocked and that contains channels for all of Frontier's current titles alongside Elite Dangerous but you can choose to opt out of any you're not specifically interested in when you join. You'll find a link to that Discord server in the description below this video. There's almost certainly going to be some sort of Halloween event in the game next week as we speculated in our story earlier and to mark the arrival of All Hallows Eve in Elite Dangerous Frontier are giving away one of their usual Halloween themed decals for free. If you go to the Elite Dangerous store or just hit up the livery section of ship outfitting in the game you'll be able to grab the cheeky jack o' lantern face right now for the princely sum of precisely no arcs whatsoever. Quite possibly the single biggest reason that the livestream is likely to be well attended on Wednesday however is that Frontier have promised to reveal what the new feature coming to Elite Dangerous this year is. The existence of the feature if not its precise nature was originally revealed to the community way back at the start of the year in Frontier Unlocked Episode 1 on January the 31st of this year. The announcement has been waiting for nigh on 9 months now. That's no insignificant amount of time and the weight of expectation at this point is quite significant. Speculation as you can imagine on just what the new feature is has been rife covering everything from ship interiors to base building to thicker atmospheres. All Frontier have said about the feature they said back in January and you can find that announcement timestamped and linked in the description below. 
but certainly the implication in that announcement was that it was something significant and FDEV were clear that it isn't a revamp of an existing feature it is something entirely new to Elite Dangerous. Whatever it is after 9 months of waiting we'll know next week. Absolutely no pressure then. Will you be watching Frontier Unlocked on Wednesday? Have you grabbed your Halloween freebie and what would you like the new feature to be? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.